Hello Star Citizens, Hellhawk here. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at a few ships that need to be updated in order to be functional after the cargo refactor is complete, as well as a few that could use an overhaul to improve quality of life. I'll also make a brief statement about a game loop that could benefit from the refactor and help change the way both industrial and PvP players interact in the verse. Let's get started. The first ship on this list is the Aurora CL, the light transport variant of the Aurora series. The CL carries a total of 6 SCU on its underslung rack. In order for this ship to fully utilize the cargo refactor, this feature would need to be updated so that you can add and remove cargo and clamp it in place based on the current design. The next ship is the Anvil Hornet. Though the Hornet is primarily a medium fighter, it does have the ability to equip its specialty mount with a 2 SCU cargo box. To properly utilize this, the attachment would have to be updated with the cargo grid and a way to access what's inside. Most likely a way to have the floor drop and a cargo grid available to snap cargo boxes in place. The Drake Mule is the first ground-based cargo vehicle in the game. Based on what I've seen so far, it's a bit of a letdown if its intended role is to act as a forklift. Functionally, it doesn't seem to have much use compared to a tractor beam gun. Even if beams are eventually affected by the target's mass, it's hard to imagine loading larger ships two SCU at a time. How is that going to be efficient, especially with the way the cargo is distributed to the front and the back of the mule? For minimal functionality, the front fork will need to be able to pick up a single box, and so will the cargo scoop in the rear. Ideally, they'd allow for multiple boxes to be stacked in the front, either vertically or horizontally, maybe with a fork upgrade, and the box underslung in the rear would be utilized as a counterbalance. Additionally, the ability to actually lift boxes up above the mule would probably be needed if this is to be one of the main logistics tools for stacking boxes over a single SCU high. To navigate while fully loaded, if your view is obscured, you would use the backup camera and drive backwards to your loading site like you do in a modern day forklift. The Argo Raft is one of my favorite ships in the game. Aside from its amazing looks and functional interior, I hope that once the cargo refactor is completely released, it will be one of the quickest ships to load and unload cargo due to the 332 SU containers it carries, as well as the crane system. However, in its current state, these containers are only models and the crane isn't functional. In order to be able to manually load this at the very least, we'll have to be able to drop the containers and open them at ground level. Ideally, the support control panel would be fully functional and manage this process, but I feel like due to the complexity of the system, we may not see the cargo crane implemented fully for some time. Even though the carrot can be loaded through the front bay with a conga line through each of the doors, I feel like this isn't going to be used at all if this is the requirement. It's a shame since the carrot would be one of the most capable ships at running cargo through hostile areas due to its shields, health point pool, and excellent defensive guns. This is why I'm putting this in the required category opposed to being an optional update. The cargo pods would need to be able to deploy at surface level. Hopefully the control panels located on the scaffolding would be the control point for this. And, preferably, there would be a ramp so that we could load ballista and centurions into the vessel as well as cargo. The Freelancer series, specifically the Standard and Max variants, have cargo capacities of 66 and 122 SCUs respectively. These cargo volumes are split between the main cargo hold at the rear of the ship and a smaller cargo area located between the main hold and the crew quarters. This middle compartment isn't very accessible with 1 SCU boxes. As you can see, it is possible to get the box through, but it feels like it's much more finicky than it should be. Either the door could be expanded, or just delete the cargo in these areas and replace it with suit lockers, weapon lockers, or other features that would need to be implemented once the ships are updated for their gold standard pass. Removing these smaller cargo grids may make sense, as when we get life support gameplay, it would help to have a zone that could be depressurized between the cargo and the living quarters. Additionally, there's a docking port or escape hatch at the top of this compartment, which would further reinforce the need for suit lockers and an area that can act as a smaller airlock in the ship. 
The RSI Constellation Taurus is the latest variant of the line to be released. It replaced the snub ship dock in the rear of the ship with additional storage, but if tractor beam mass limitations are ever put into the game, it would be a pain to get cargo into this compartment. This isn't the end of the world since the cargo in the rear of the ship is limited, but having a rear cargo lift may make this area more accessible. The Caterpillar is my favorite Drake ship in the game, until the Kraken comes out, of course. One of the biggest downfalls of the ship is it doesn't look like 32 SCU cargo containers will be compatible with this setup. Now, hopefully, there are going to be alternative SCU boxes, maybe 4, 8, 12, or 16 SCUs, but if not, this is going to be a major pain to load. Also, since its cargo elevators are inoperable, ground support won't be able to load cargo directly into the bays. In my opinion, getting these elevators working is a feature that is way overdue for one of the oldest cargo ships in the game. Now, we have beams currently, so this may not be that big of a deal, but if mass limits ever become a factor in loading with tractor beam tools, the CAT's functionality would be even more limited. The 600 Eyes main cargo bay is pretty easy to get to. However, that's not the only section of the ship equipped with cargo grids. The other grids are way out of the way. In order to access them, you have to go up an elevator with your cargo, through a relaxation area, down some stairs, and then make it to the grids on either side of the room. This would be awkward as hell to load and would be very time consuming. Now, CIG has confirmed that they're going to be reworking the ship. Hopefully, the flow of materials into these cargo rooms is something that they took into consideration. This next quality of life update is one of my most sought after features in the game. As an avid industry player, the mining game loop is my favorite. Though there are plenty of features that could be added to this loop, having the mineral bags on the prospector and mole physicalized would make a massive difference in how mining is done. This would allow for true mining operations, moving bags to waiting transports that ferry goods from the mining zone to the refinery. Bags could then be replaced and mining can continue. An increase in activity like this would also result in piracy gameplay getting a much needed boost, since ore and minerals are some of the most valuable commodities in the game. A boost in piracy should also translate to a boost in bounty hunting and mercenary gameplay. This one feature has the potential to bring together players in a way we haven't seen since the original jump down, as all the gameplay involved would be based on player activity, not preset events. PvP zones wouldn't be relegated to specific sites and would encourage pirates to create new strategies to track down and engage their foes. You may point to the new salvage feature and say that has the potential to be just as valuable. However, salvage is highly reliant on persistent entity streaming. There are too many unknowns. We don't know how long shipwrecks are going to persist, whether or not Quanta, the back-end simulation, will provide players with lootable NPC wrecks. We don't know how much the salvage materials are worth and how long they take to harvest. Unless CIG is going to be spawning salvage fields that can be scanned down, and the value of the repair paste or salvage boxes that you get are extremely high, salvage gameplay probably won't be consistent enough to generate the same amount of gameplay opportunities that mining will. That's all for the ships and features that I wanted to review today. I'm going to wrap up with a few questions I hope CIG can answer in the coming weeks. Will the first iteration of the cargo refactor have different size SCU boxes? Will you be able to stack them in different configurations? Will ammunition now be physicalized when transporting? In the future, when you come across a ship that can be salvaged, but you're not in a salvage ship, will you still be able to blast apart and collect pieces of it in a cargo vessel? If so, can you cut up ship parts and snap them to a grid, or maybe deposit them in a special container, or will you be stuck using a salvage ship? Way down the line, have you given any thought to how new ships are going to be transferred through the verse? 
Will hulls be broken down and boxed, or set up in large frames and transported by mega haulers? I understand this is way down the track, but if you're building the cargo foundation now, hopefully it's something you've considered with the tech you have. Well, I hope you enjoyed the content, and if you did, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. This is my first YouTube video that I've produced and hope to follow it up with many more in the coming weeks. I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on this topic, and if you find that there's a ship that I missed in my rundown, feel free to add the info to the comments section down below. Well, that's all I had for today. This is Hellhawk signing off. See you in the verse.